Hey, this is the Daily Overpass. My name is Eric and I make apps. Now today let's ask the question, can a bespoke services company be systematized? So earlier today, I went to go see a doctor. It's nothing serious. I think I'm having a little bit of back pain. I think I overexerted myself at the gym the other day. And I guess it's just age catching up with me. So, so nothing serious. But I went to go see the, the GP uh, this morning, right? And if you've ever been to the doctor in the, uh, on the NHS, or it's very similar to military doctors. So those are the ones I have the most experience with growing up in the military having military doctors and also the NHS. It's a very systematized process. It's probably the same for all doctors actually. You make it, you call up, you make an appointment, uh, they give you a time, you show up at that time. You, if you have to fill any paperwork, you fill in the paperwork and then you sit down in the waiting room and then they call your name up and you go in and tell the doctor your problems, tell the doctor what's, what's bothering you. And I always feel bad when I'm walking to see the doctor because I always think I could say whatever I want at this point. I mean, I said on the phone it was back pain, but I could walk in there and say, yeah, doctor, uh, I got, you know, I, th I think I'm getting spaghetti coming out my butt or something completely ridiculous. I'm, I'm sure they see really grotesque things in there. And I always think, you know, I'm just going to, it's just back pain. So, um, but one of the things that always fascinates me about it is that everything is so systematized up until that point. Up until the point where you walk into the doctor's office, everything follows a certain procedure, right? A lot of times with bespoke software development, if you do software development for, that, for different clients and they're always different, you, it's very difficult to follow procedures. And it's something that we've struggled with for a long time. Right, because every project is different. You have a client come to you and say, we have this existing application that crashes whenever this happens. Could you have a look at it? Or they'll say, we have this Bluetooth device that communicates with Azure, which communicates with AWS. And you know, can you, can you build that for us? And a lot of times as software developers, you, you, everything is different. And you're like, okay, yeah, we could do that. We could do that. We get those skills on there. We get those. But the ideal situation is that everything up until that point is systematized. So. One of the best things I did last year was I, st fi I finally sat down and I spent like an entire weekend and I documented all of our processes. So we have a couple of, of documentation, a couple of documents, one on client acquisition, one on delivery and another one on discovery. And I actually sat down and documented how everything works or how everything should work. Right? And, what, and I shared it with the team. They made some changes and we kind of, we, we really massaged it and we put together this perfect process document and everyone kept saying the same thing. You should have done this years ago, right? And it was true. I knew I should, I should have done it years ago, but I hadn't. And when you don't have documented processes and you, they're all in your head, you could change things from here to there and nobody really knows what they're doing. You're spending a lot of time thinking about how things should work. Now, years ago, God, it was like over 10 years ago, I read this book, The E-Myth Revisited. Uh, I reread it again last year. I know I've talked about this before. If you run a small business, you definitely have to read this uh, book. It's all about, um, about running a small business and the processes and procedures that are involved and he uses McDonald's a lot as a, an example. So McDonald's, you know, they, everything is documented, everything is timed, everything is done consistently the same way every single time. Now the thing I always thought about this was but doing bespoke s services, that's not the case because you're not always doing the same thing every time. However, just like with the GP, just like going to see the doctor today, everything that does not require unique thought or you, you, you sit down and think about a solution to a problem should be systematized. And that was one of the things that our document did last year. And all of, now all of a sudden this year, we're able to scale up a little bit and take on more projects because we're spending less time doing the little things and being able to do more of the sit down and think about solutions to problems and being able to hand off the things that could be systematized to other people. And it's working out really, really well. Now you can only do this, the, the chicken and egg thing here is you can only do this when you get more people. It's really hard to write a process document when it's just you, right? If you've ever worked for a big software company or a small software company or a big organization or a small organization, you know you go to a big organization. Like I was working in a, uh, one of the investment banks, I was working in Canary Wharf, we'd have the, the database team. Even though 
as developers, we wrote the databases, we would have to clear them with the DBA, and he would have to give a stamp of approval, and then we'd have to go to the server team, and they would have to give their stamp of approval, and everybody did one specific little thing. And then you work in a small company, and you have to set up the server, you have to, you have to wash the mugs, you have to vacuum the floor, you have to do everything. So it does take getting a bit of scale. And one of the hardest things I found about doing the process documentation was thinking, this is not how things are done. These are how things will be done. This is how things should be done. And all of a sudden, things have started to take off and it's, it's really very, very exciting. So for those of you guys out there who do run bespoke software companies and you do things differently every time for every single client, and, and you're not systematizing as much as possible so everything goes through the same process. Uh, when a client comes to you, what does somebody say? What's the next thing? What's the next step in the process, the next step in the process? It's something that's really, it's just been a real eye-opener for me. So anyway, let me know what you guys think. For those of you guys who, who do this kind of thing, what kind of processes do you have in place? How has that helped you? Because in one of these days, I'll, I'll share with you some of our processes because um, it's just, I don't know, I'm just really excited about this kind of stuff. So anyway, that is it for today. I'll talk to you guys again tomorrow.